Hello everyone and welcome to my talk. My name is Omrit Filzer and I will talk about static and streaming data structures for curves under the Fouchet distance. And this is a joint work with the Arnold Filzer. So let's start with defining the main object of this talk, polygonal curves. A polygonal curve is simply a sequence of M points in B dimensions and the line segments that are connecting any two consecutive points. You can find curves in many applications, modeling many different types of objects. Uh, some examples are financial charts, spatial data, computational biology, um, analysis of football games, and many more. Now, the most natural question to ask is, uh, how, do you, uh, how do we compare two curves? Well, it, of course, it depends on the application, and there are many distance measures you can choose from. Uh, but in this talk, we are focusing on the well-known Frechet distance. And in the last two decades, uh, there is an increasing uh, interest in uh, this distance and its variance. Uh, it became very popular and shown to be useful in many applications. Uh, another great thing about this distance measure is that it can be described with this very nice man dog analogy. So given two polygonal curves, red and blue, imagine a man standing on the first point of the blue and a dog standing on the first point of the red. Now the man and dog are connected by a leash of some length delta and they are walking along their paths. So they can walk in whatever speed they like, but they cannot move backwards. The Frechet distance between the red and the blue curve uh, is then the length of the leash that allows them to reach the endpoints of their paths. Uh, in this talk, we are focusing on the discrete version of Frechet distance, where we only care about distances between uh, the vertices of the curves. So here we also have a fun way to describe the distance. We replace the man and dog by two frogs. And now the frogs uh, are just jumping from point to point on their respective sequences. Just like that. Um, so this sequence of jumps defines a curve alignment which is essentially a valid sequence of positions of the two frogs along their curves. And the discrete Fisher distance minimizes the maximum distance between the frogs over all the possible alignments. So we are looking for the alignment in which the maximum distance between the frogs is minimized. If you want to compute the discrete Fisher distance between two curves, there is a quadratic time dynamic programming algorithm. And this is also true for the continuous case. Um, and this was known already in 94 and only 20 years after that, in 2014, it was shown that under the strong exponential time hypothesis, you cannot get subquadratic time and not even a three approximation in subquadratic time. There are some approximation algorithms and currently the best known is an alpha approximation in uh, m log m plus m squared over alpha squared time, uh, which means, for example, that you can get linear approximation uh, in linear time. But we still don't know if it is possible to get a constant approximation in subquadratic time. Now that might be a problem when we're dealing with very large curves because the quadratic time might be infeasible in such applications. Also, there are some applications in which we have many queries to a single input curve, for example, in pattern matching or signature verification. And one way to deal with this is to construct a distance oracle for the curve. A distance oracle gets as an input a curve P of length M and some parameter epsilon. And given a quarter curve Q of length K, 
which is smaller than m, it returns an approximation of the distance between p and q. This is called an asymmetric distance oracle because the length of the query is smaller than the input. And our goal is to have no dependency on m in the space usage. One way to avoid any dependency on m is to use curve simplifications. So a simplification pi of a curve p is simply a curve which is shorter than p, but is close to p, or it is a good representation uh, of p. And we can talk about um, optimal case simplifications, uh, which is a curve of length k with a minimum distance to p, or an optimal delta simplification, which is a curve with minimum number of vertices and distance at most delta to p. Using the idea of simplifications, we can simply get a three approximation a distance oracle with space independent of m. And the way to do this is simply store an optimal case simplification pi of p. Then for a query curve q, we only need to compute the distance between uh, q and the simplification. Um, now using uh, a simple uh, triangle inequality arg argument, we get that the sum of this uh, two distances is a three approximation of the distance between P and Q. So we actually get a three approximation um, with a KD space and a K, K squared D query time. Now, if we want a one plus epsilon approximation, this becomes more complicated. Um, Dremel, Psaros, and Schmidt showed a one plus epsilon approximation with exponential space and quadratic uh, query time. In our paper, we show a one plus epsilon approximation with near linear query time, and the space is still exponential, but significantly improved. Uh, we don't have this uh, k to the k factor. For the streaming scenario, uh, Dremel, Psaros, and Schmidt showed an algorithm with query time uh, roughly k to the power of four, and the space depends quite badly on m, which is uh, what we are trying to avoid. In our paper, we actually showed that we can extend our algorithm to work in the streaming scenario and get the ex exact same uh, space and query bounds. So we get a linear query time and space independent of M. Here's a flow chart of all the components constructing our distance organ. Um, we start by solving the decision problem. Given a parameter R, return yes if the distance between P and Q is at most R and no if the distance is larger than one plus epsilon r. And to avoid an independency on m, we again use a simplification of p. So uh, we need this uh, case simplification algorithm, which we generalize to high dimensions. Then we construct a distance circle for the case where the distance between p and q is in some range alpha beta which is known in advance. And this distance oracle returns an approximated distance only when the original distance is in that range. The next step is to construct a symmetric distance oracle for the case where the input and the query are of the same length. Uh, for this, we use the linear approximation algorithm in linear time that I mentioned earlier. Uh, which we also generalize to high dimensions. And combining all these ingredients, we get a, a, an asymmetric distance organ. Now, I think that the most interesting component here is the symmetric oracle. And I will try to give you a sense of how it works in the next few slides. 
So assume that P and Q are both of length M. Uh, we begin by, by computing a very rough estimation tilde delta of the distance using the approximation algorithm uh, in linear time. And then based on this estimation, we decide what to do next. So we need to compare it to some property of the input curve P. And the key insight is to consider the length of the edges of P. So what do I mean by that? Um, let L1 to Ln minus one be the length of the edges of P in increasing order. Now we construct for each such length a bounded range distance okay, for some uh, uh, parameters alpha and beta. Then we check if tilde delta, the, esti the, the estimation that we have is in one of these ranges. If it is, we query the respective bounded range distance circle and we are done. Otherwise, if, if uh, it is not in one of the ranges, then we have three options. It can be much smaller than the length of the shortest edge. Uh, it can be much larger than the length of the largest edge, or it can be in between two ranges because uh, those ranges might not overlap. Now there's a trade-off here in choosing alpha and beta, the parameters of the, of the range. Uh, on one hand, we want ranges that will be small enough so that the respective uh, distance circles will have small space and query time. On the other hand, in the cases where the estimation uh, does not fall in one of the ranges, we want to compute an approximated distance in linear time. And for this, we need beta to be uh, sufficiently larger than alpha. In the paper, we showed that it is indeed possible to get a polynomial ratio for the ranges and still uh, be able to uh, compute uh, the distance between P and Q in linear time in the case that um, uh, delta tilde does not fall into one of the ranges. And we get uh, linear query time and the space is exponential in M. Now back to the flow chart of uh, components constructing our distance circle. Let's now consider the streaming scenario. So here the curve P is given as a stream. And again, we want the space usage to be independent of the length of the stream. So essentially there are two components here that need to work on a, a stream. Uh, those are the decision distance oracle and the simplification algorithm. And now I want to give you some idea on how we make our decision distance oracle to work in the streaming scenario. So to understand the main idea of uh, the streaming decision distance oracle, uh, what you need to know about the static decision uh, distance oracle is that it is basically a collection of grid curves around the input curve P, which represents uh, all the possible query curves that are close enough to P. In other words, given some uh, distance value R, we store all the curves of length at most K that have their points from a fine enough grid around the points of uh, P, and such that the distance to P is at most one plus epsilon times R. Now, given a query curve, we can simply snap its points to the grid. And if it has distance at most R to P, we can get a good approximation of this distance uh, because we already computed this distance for um, the grid curves. Now, uh, in the streaming setting, we cannot allow ourselves to store P. So we only store a set of uh, grid curves, the set of uh, uh, grid curves that we computed. But we need a way to update, to update this uh, set when the next point of P arrives. So we show that this is indeed possible by looking only on the previous set of curves 
and the next point of P. And this is using a sort of a dynamic programming approach. Some curves from the previous set will remain unchanged, some will be removed, um, and some curves um, um, will, to some curves we will add uh, an additional point. Now what happens if the value R needs to be changed? Uh, first, we have observed that uh, R can only increase when we read uh, new points of P because K is smaller than M. So we choose some initial value of R that we determine uh, after reading the first K plus one points of P. Then we compute the set of uh, grid curves and uh, update it uh, as we continue reading more points from P. Now, at some point, the set of uh, grid curves will become empty, um, which means that the value of R that we were using is too small, and we need to increase R. So what we do is uh, we choose an arbitrary curve W from the previous set, which is not empty. Then we increase R. And we start over the entire streaming algorithm as if W was P. And the idea is that after increasing R, W is now very close to P comparing to this uh, new R. Uh, so we still get a good approximation of the distance uh, for the new uh, set of grid curves. And now I want to tell you about a new problem that we consider, which is also related to the problem of a distance oracle to a subcurve. Uh, and here um, um, the query also contains a subcurve of P to which we want to compute the distance. And, but let's begin with the new problem, which we call uh, the zoom in problem. So here, imagine that you have an application and that need to visualize some very large curve of length uh, M on the screen. Um, but of course, there is a limited number of pixels that you can draw, say K. So when you want to display the entire curve, you only draw a K simplification of the original. Now, the user might want to zoom in and see more details of a subsequence of the original curve, but you still want to display the maximum k pixels on the screen. So you want to compute another k simplification, and this time it is a simplification of the subcurve. Now, computing a simplification will take time proportional to the length of the subcurve. So you might want to store a data structure that will allow you to do this uh, fast. And so we show that you can get a linear query time uh, for simplification of length 2K. So this is a bicriteria solution. Uh, and the space uh, is uh, only roughly M times K. And this relates to the problem of computing a distance oracle with subcurve uh, queries. Uh, uh, so the query is some curve Q and two indices I and J. And we want to approximate the distance between Q and the subcurve P uh, IJ. A trivial solution would be to store a distance oracle for any pair of indices. So we get uh, linear query time but uh, the space is a uh, quadratic in, in M. And there are two previous row considering only the case of K equals two. And the space is uh, linear in M, but the query time also depends on M. In uh, our paper, we show the data structure with near linear space in M and the query time is quadratic in K, but does not depend on M. Now let's conclude with some uh, open questions. 
So there, there are many open questions and uh, I listed here the two that seems to me the most interesting currently um, in this uh, context. So the first one is regarding uh, lower bounds uh, on the problem. And actually there is a paper by Dremel and Seros, which was recently uploaded uh, to archive with a lower bound in the cell probe model that shows that our, bound, our bounds for the decision distance oracle are almost uh, tight. And the second question is, can we get a polynomial space instead of exponential space for the data structure uh, when we are ready to compromise on a constant approximation? Uh, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed my talk. Bye-bye.